Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with FlashGameU.com. So today I have a tutorial on how to have multiple Flash games in the same Flash application. So for instance, say you've got uh, two games and you want the user to play one and then when that's done play another one. I've got a few questions about this in the last few weeks so it's a good one for a tutorial. Okay, so I want to simulate two games because I don't want to have two full games here in the example. So I've got this one called Game 1 and basically the game is just one big ugly button in the middle of the screen. And I've got Game 2 which is the same thing, just the heading is separate. So what I want to do is basically ha uh, have these play back to back. Now the way to do this really, uh, or one of the many ways, is to have a main Flash movie that actually has these both these games play inside of it. So I'm going to create the main movie.fla, which is this, which is a blank movie. There's really nothing in it except a script. I'm going to do this all as frame scripts rather than uh, separate class objects just to save time here during the tutorial. So for instance, um, when this main movie starts, the first thing we wanted to do is immediately trigger game one. So we're going to create a function called start game and we're going to pass into it game one, the name of that movie. And this start game uh, function is going to take the name of a game here as a string. And then it's going to use a loader object. So this is the key to the whole thing here is the loader object. The loader object allows you to load an external flash movie. So all you need to do here is create a loader. We call it game one actually. We can call it anything we want. We can call it uh, game loader. Probably be more apt. And game loader and we create it and then we use it with the load command and a short object here, a URL request with the name of the game plus the .swf we know will be appended there. So basically uh, some, you can put these on two lines, create the URL request and store it in a variable and then pass it into load or do it in one line like I did. It's not too bad of a line so I'd like doing it in one. And then you want to do add child game loader to actually have that uh, appear on the screen. Otherwise it will load the game in but you won't be able to see it. Okay, so what will happen here is start game. It'll with game one, it'll come in here, it'll load it up and display it on the screen. And if we actually run it, we'll see that's exactly what happens. Game one loads in here. And, it, and it's at it's the same size as this movie and it's at point zero zero because we haven't told it to be anywhere else. So it basically covers the entire movie. Great, so it does that. Now we want to have something inside of game one that signals when the game is over. So the way we do that is we create a uh, button script because all we've got here is a button. This could actually be your continue button at the end of a game um, but in this case the entire game is just pressing a button. We create an event listener for mouse click that calls simulate game over which is the function we're going to call um, and then this function here just takes event uh, as a parameter because it needs that. And then what we want it to do is tell the parent movie that it is done, that this one is done. The way we need to do that is parent.parent. .parent. Why parent.parent? .parent? Well, the parent of the game is actually a loader object. So we've created a loader object and we've loaded the game inside the loader object. So the game's parent is loader object. Well, we don't want that. Uh, we don't want to communicate with the loader object. We want to communicate with the movie at the main level. So it's the loader object's parent. So the parent of the parent. And we cast it as a movie clip just to make sure that action script knows that it's a movie clip there and won't complain about it. And then we're going to send it uh, basically a function game over signal which will have to be something we include in the main movie. And we're going to pass two parameters. One's going to be something that will tell us what game this was. And it's just a lot easier than trying to figure that out uh, by other means. Just pass it the name. It's game one. And then we're also going to send it a copy of the loader itself. And you'll see why in a second. So this is the loader and this is the parent of the loader which is the main movie, just to be clear. If we go back to the main movie we see we have the game over signal and we take those two parameters. We're going to take the second parameter that, which was the loader and use that for this simple command, remove child. That will remove it from the screen. Okay, so that's why we need to pass that in. Now we go and we check the which game name and we say, ah, it's game one. If it's game one, then load and start game game two, which will go back to here and do everything again except it'll have game two dot swf. And if we run it, we'll see that's exactly what happens. We have game one, we press the button, and we saw game one disappear and game two take its place. If we click here, game two disappears and nothing happens because we don't have anything set to happen there. We could have it go to a you know a sequence complete or go to game three or anything we want. But that's basically how you do it, how you can have multiple movies 
play inside one movie to create a sequence. Or of course this could be something where there could be on a screen uh, five buttons. Choose which game you want to play and each one of those five buttons then triggers a different game loader uh, from this function and then when they're over they could basically just remove themselves and maybe not even launch a new game. Maybe go back to the screen with the choice of buttons on them. So a lot of different things you could do uh, using loaders like this to combine games into one. So this has been Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game U uh, at FlashGameU.com. If you're watching this at uh, another site uh, such as YouTube, you may want to consider going to FlashGameU.com and seeing a higher resolution version of this tutorial and other tutorials so that you might be able to make out the scripts a little bit better. Thanks a lot. Bye.